that God has took him to where he is today. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So I want to celebrate with you. I greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And he's good. Amen. Amen. I want to salute you Amen. for the great job that you have done, Pastor. And I'm not going to take much time saying that because you know that I mean that from my heart. Amen. I want to salute the great, wonderful man that I believe in. And I believe in him so much. The very first time I sat under his ministry, Dr. Lee. Could you put your hands together for Pastor for the And um, I want to bless you this night for inviting me to share with you. I feel very honored and very special to be able to come and share with you. Amen. 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 My wife is here. She never likes to be at the forefront like I do. But that's all right. That's here. And I thank God for her. I have my great daughter. Well, she's my daughter now. You all would know that. <laughs> brought her into my life and I have my wonderful grandson and God bless you with me. God bless you, you may be seated. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have been given the great responsibility to address you on your topic taking charge and claiming your victory. Somebody say, take charge and claim your victory. But I want to talk to you tonight for a little while on the topic, use what you got. Come on, come on. Everybody's here with me. Yeah. Use what you got. Yeah. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Exodus. If you find it on the screen, that's all right. The book of Exodus, chapter number 14. Exodus chapter number 14. When you preach, you don't go into too much deep exegetical outlook. You want to demo out a little bit. It's different to teaching. 99% of my life, I teach the Word of God. The pastor said, no, not tonight. <laughs> Exodus chapter number 14. When you get it, say man, even though I didn't find it as yet. And I want to pick up from verse number 10. When you get it, say amen. amen. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes Behold, the Egyptian matched after them. And there was so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die? In the wilderness, I want to let you know you ain't dying in no wilderness. I said, I want to let you know prophetically tonight, first of all, that you ain't dying in no wilderness. God didn't take you through these 30 years and then go slap you at the backside of the desert for you to die. The children of Israel didn't believe the word of God when God said, you're going over to the other side. I'm here to tell you tonight, you ain't got this far to die. Amen. Mm. Amen. Wherefore thou hast thou dealt thus with us to carry 
I have poured out of Egypt. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. They had a wilderness mentality. I'm here to tell you that you don't need no wilderness mentality. You need a victory mentality. You need a breakthrough mentality. Am I still here with somebody? And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. Fear not. I wish you could shout it with me. That's why I keep saying that. What's wrong with you? You're in church, man. What's wrong with you? And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. I wish you could shout this a little louder. Moses said unto the people, Fear not. I feel some power here in that word. Fear not. Stand still. Don't make a noise. God know how to make a noise for you. God know how to make a way where there seems to be no way. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will show to you today for all the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cries thou unto me? that they go forward. Lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground to the midst of the sea. Why? Because I'm gone all by myself. Y'all didn't hear that one. I say, y'all didn't hear that one. And God, all by myself. Where's my keyboard, man? I preach with it. I told you. Look at that. We made a deal. Get on that thing, bro. <laughs> I'm God. All by myself. What is it that you have that you can make Christ in you look good? What is it that you have that can cause the devil great discomfort? What is it that you have that can cause your enemy to tremble in fear? What is it that you have that can make you stand all oh, that the devil throws at you? Y'all not here with me. What is it that you have that can cause you to rise above your trials? What is it that you have that can cause you to rise above your troubles? What is it that you have that can cause you to rise above your temptation? What is it that you have that can cause you to rise above your failures? What is it that you have that can cause you to rise above your fears? Y'all not here with me tonight. What is it that you have 
have that will make you bold in your proclamation as you face your battles bold enough to say I'm not surrendering bold enough to say I'm not retreating bold enough to say I'm coming out of this situation bold enough to say that when the storm is gone when the storm is past I'll be the last man standing watching back and say look what the Lord has done what is it that can stop you if God is for you what it is that can back you up against the wall if God is for you yeah I'm more than conquerors my intent tonight is to present to you with contents from the word of God that will silence the cowardice and draw back mentality. My intent tonight is to activate the overcoming victorious spirit within you. Are you hearing me tonight? I want to present to you some proposition. I want to tell you tonight that God is for you. Shout to somebody tonight and said God is for me say it again God say God is for me proposition number one God has made you a you are y'all didn't hear me tonight I said God has made you a you are the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse number 3 he says you are the blessed of the Lord in other words God have granted you special favor on your behalf are you hearing me tonight I said you are the blessed of the Lord he has granted you special favor in the midst of what you're going through favor is upon you in the midst of the situation that you've been facing I want to let you know that favor is upon you say favor is upon me not only have he blessed you not only are you the blessed of the Lord Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 4 says you are the chosen of the Lord y'all didn't hear me tonight in other words he selected you by himself he didn't call on Moses he didn't call on Joshua when he decided to save you he saved you all by yourself when he decided to bought you he bought you all by yourself are you here and touch to person give them a high five and said you are the chosen of the Lord God has made you let somebody say God has made you say it again God has made me I want you to put your hands on your stomach and say, my God has made me. Yeah, my God has made me. You are the redeemed of the Lord. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what he did for you. Say how he brought you out. Say how he lifted you up. Ah, somebody shout yes! Not only 
you are the redeem of the Lord but the Bible says in John 15 verse number 15 he said at one point in time I called you a servant but a servant don't know the business of the master at one time when I just pick you up I didn't really trust you so I called you servants but he said after three years I've been with you after three years I've Y'all didn't hear what I said tonight. says I am he said you are adapted sons and daughters of God I want to talk a little bit about adoption because in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant when you made a covenant with someone uh, you have to make sure that the party that you made that covenant with you got to make sure that you keep it to the letter so if you fail it means that the covenant is broken uh, y'all hear what I'm talking about but that's the way of the old covenant when you get into the New Testament it's not just covenant it's family Y'all didn't hear what I'm talking about. That's why when the prodigal son, the Bible said that after he went and he messed up his life and he did a lot of crazy things with his life. But then the Bible says that he came to himself. And when he came to himself, he went back to the father and he said, Daddy, Daddy, I no longer deserve to be called your 
son I want you to put me in a little corner where I can be a little servant boy but the father said mm -mm, that's not the way that I'm thinking about you've been gone a long time but you still my son are y'all hearing me tonight you've been beaten and blown down in the pig pen but you still my son you've been knocked out but you are still my son y'all hear me tonight in a family you don't always have to be perfect on the, the old covenant you couldn't even smile too hard y'all there with me there were no family relationship the church was not yet born are y'all hearing me tonight are y'all hearing me tonight but on that day of pentecost when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind and the holy ghost came upon them god moved them from just covenant relationship into family relationship somebody say you are not only are you adopted sons and daughters but the Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 7 he calls you a sita in heavenly places are y'all hearing me tonight in the Greek the Greek scholars will tell you there is something called the prophetic perfect in other words, the prophetic perfect is a reference to something that God said that is so certain, so unbrokeable that it must come to pass. So God says, even though you are not yet up there as yet, but as far as I am concerned, when I look down upon you, I see you down here as though you are already up there. somebody and say you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus proposition number two who you are qualifies you to use what you have could I say that again who you are qualifies you to use what you have John chapter 1 verse number 12 he says as many that receive him to them give ye the power to become the sons and daughters of God I want to tell you tonight that what qualifies you is not the song service what qualifies you is not the shoe that you jump for joy in what qualifies you is that you have the power to be called the sons and daughters of God hallelujah somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah you own the right to speak somebody help me because you are qualified to use what you have you own the right number one to speak what God said you can speak y'all been hear what I'm saying he said in, in Mark chapter number 11 he says if you have faith he said have faith in God is somebody listening to me tonight he said if you got faith you shall say to that mountain be thou rooted up and be cast into the sea and it shall be done I want you to know tonight that you got a mouth Oh God, you're not hearing me tonight. You got a mouth and that mouth must be used to say what God say you can. If he say you're going over to the other side, you got to learn how to open your mouth and say if God's 
spoke it, I can speak it also. It doesn't matter what the devil say. It doesn't matter what the wizard and the witch and the witch says. If God said I'm going over, that's why he give me a mouth. Are y'all hearing me tonight? I wish I can get you to hollow out tonight and say I'm going over. I'm going over. Not only do you got the right to speak as God say you can, but you own the right to act as God will have you to act. In one of the synoptic gospel, the Lord said to his disciples, I will meet you over on the other side. Are y'all here with me? And while they were traveling on a board, the Bible said that all of a sudden, historian says that there was no reason for a sudden vehement wind to be blowing on that coast. And y'all hear what I'm talking about? But while they were sailing on that sea, Jesus was in the hall of the boat, resting and taking a rest. And the wind began to blow and toss. Is somebody here with me tonight? And while the wind was blowing and vehemently, the Bible said that Peter went down into the hall and he said, Jesus, you don't care that we going to perish. And Jesus said, well, what is the problem? He said, can't you see that the wind is blowing? Can't you see that we are about to perish? Then Jesus got up, the Bible said, and he stood in the foot of the boat and he looked at the raging storms. Is somebody hearing me tonight? He looked at the wind that was blowing and bussing and he opened up his mouth and he said, Peace be still. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying tonight. I said, Y'all didn't hear what I said tonight. And after he told them, Peace be still. The next thing he said to them, Oh, ye of little faith. In other words, I bless you with the mouth that I got. If I said it, you could have done it. You could have get up and you could have opened up your mouth and you should have said to that wind, Peace be still. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. When will you open up your mouth and tell the devil, Peace be still? Peace. You are qualified. Say, You are qualified. <laughs> Proposition number three. God says, you got it, so use it. I'm going to calm down a little bit here. You got it, so use it. This ain't no Nancy story. This ain't no Nancy story. This ain't no fairy tale. This is supernatural reality. You got it. Blessed be the God of our Father who have blessed us already. Some of you still waiting for it. You got it already. Am I right about it? You got it already. Touch the person and say, I've got it already. What do you have? <laughs> Number one. You have the invincible armor of God. Are y'all hear what I'm telling you tonight? Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand. Didn't say sit. You didn't say to fall on the ground as though nobody knows the trouble that I got. Y'all didn't hear me tonight. He said, I've given you an armor. 
That armor is invincible. It is impregnable. In other words, when the darts come at your mind, he says, get the helmet, the shield of faith. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? When doubts and fear is coming against you, God says, you got something that is invincible. And you will stand against every move that the devil is making against your life. And then he said, you got a, you got a loins here. That's why the Bible said, God, your loins with truth. Because this area was very significant. And there was a robe and cord that you will have to bind the soldier will bind it together and when he bind that together and put it and draw that knot he is saying to his enemy look out I'm coming y'all didn't hear what I'm saying tonight when he put that around him he's saying devil I'm coming not to lose this battle I'm coming to win this battle y'all there with me then he said your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel do you know what that mean that means new territories y'all been hearing what I'm saying tonight new territories the Bible says that when the enemy what comes in like a flood No, no, no. It's a bad reading. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. Have you not read in the book of Matthew? God was speaking about this church. And he said to them, I want to give you assurance about my church. This ain't going to be no weak, feeble, anemic church. He said, I want to tell you in advance what kind of church I will make. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do you know what that mean? It means that it doesn't mean that when the devil comes against you, you're going to keep having to back up, back up. No, no, no. The Greek scholar says that when the devil comes, every move and advancement that he make, when he make them, you will push him back and you will take new territories. You will take new lands. Y'all didn't hear me tonight. I said, y'all didn't hear me tonight. So you got the invincible armor of God. Are y'all there with me? Can't be touched. You call it the armor of God. That's not the armor of me. You got to be crazy. Some of you trying to put on the pastor's armor. Y'all here with me. Some of you are trying to put on the deacon's armor. Some of you are trying to put on your denomination armor. Didn't say that. That's the weak. He said, put on the invincible armor of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You got it? So use it. Touch somebody and say, you got it. You got it. I say you got it so you just use it use it take it down from your counter take it down from under the bed take it out and use it not only do you have the invincible armor of God but the Bible says that you have the word of God 
Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 12 how many of you know what that one said he said the word of God is quick you talk about jet I, are y'all here with me now you talk about super speed jet the Bible says that the word of God is quick not only is it quick but it's it's more powerful it has more power than nuclear power it got more power than demon power it got more power than the wizard it got more power than the charm y'all didn't hear what I'm talking about tonight it got more power than the graveyard that they put your name in y'all didn't hear what I'm talking about y'all just sit by day like dead folks it got power 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 more power than principalities more powers than spiritual wickedness in heavenly places more powers than voodoo more powers than witch doctors and y'all hear what i'm talking about the bible says the word is like a hammer it can hammer down the walls it can hammer down the storms it can hammer down the witchcraft it can hammer down the curses y'all don't hear what i'm saying tonight i wish i can hollow out to somebody tonight there is power in the word power 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 i feel the holy ghost here tonight i see you feel the holy ghost here tonight this is no time to retreat this is no time to surrender this is no backup weapon this is an offensive weapon it will cut through lies it will cut through deception y'all they hear what i'm saying tonight power somebody say power say power power <laughs> not only you got it touch somebody say you got it Come on, get, get ready, get ready. Say, tell to touch somebody and say, you got it? Tell them, behave as though you have it. When you got to know what you have and who you are and what grace have done for you and how mercy have rewrote your name. When you know what you got, Jeremiah said, ah, the word is shut up in my bones like fire. You got fire in your mouth. You got fire in your belly. When you speak to devils, devils got to go and flee in the name of Jesus. Touch somebody and say, you got it, you got it, you got it. Touch them neighbor and say, you got it, you got it, use it, you got it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> Not only do you have the invincible armor. Not only do you, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Not only do you have the word of God, not only do you have the word of God, but you have unlimited power in prayer. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying here tonight. You got unlimited power in prayer. Elijah was a man of like passion yet he prayed one man one man he prayed 
And he said, Lord God, there will be no rain for three, he said three or seven years. Three years. He prayed. Are y'all here with me? One man. We have a theology that's not biblical. We've been taught that the more people we got, it's the more powerful the prayer is. That's not necessarily true. James echoed it out very clear. He says the effectual fervent. Effectual fervent prayer of one righteous man avail it much it can call down fire from heaven and destroy the witchcraft one man with his prayer led an Assyrian army blinded and said look I got them for you king Y'all hear me now? Could I say something? Is that all right? Am I, could I preach? The problem in the body of Christ. I was telling my ministry. The, Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have turned it into dens of thieves. I've started to find out that a man can be bigger than his prayer. A man of God cannot be bigger than his prayer. A church cannot be stronger than their prayer. What we want in church tonight is hops scotch dancing fun time in the church y'all hear what i'm talking about now uh, y'all not here with me tonight rock me with some songs is okay rock me with some dance but it's okay but when prayer time come the church is empty pray is the one thing that God says his house should look like. If you're looking for a description of how a church should look, it's the prayer of that church. Well, you can't blame it because we pastors not praying again. Y'all not hearing me now. I said we're not praying again because we too busy preparing sermons too busy getting entertainment too busy giving the people what they want to hear but y'all didn't read what the Bible says in the book of Acts in those new apostolic days I don't know what they call apostles today. I'm sorry. Don't throw me out. But back then apostles were apostles. Because the Bible says that when the church started to grow, they came together. There was a storing in the apostolic gathering. Are y'all there with me? And they gathered the people together and they said, listen, man, we don't have time to study about money. I want to God that this will be the cry of the men of God today. That you will preach when there is no money in your pocket. That you will pray when there is no money in your pocket. That you will do the work of God when there is no money in your pocket. Some months ago, someone called me to do funeral. I don't like doing funerals. That's just not my calling. I don't like doing weddings. I do it, but so they called me and said, I would like you to do a funeral. I said, I'm very busy at the point in time and I, I can't do it back. But please, if not the service, just the burial. How much do you charge? I said, I don't charge. 
I said, I don't charge. We went to the funeral. And as soon as I was through with the funeral, she took an envelope and stuck it in my hands. I start seeing shocks. I start seeing breaks. Y'all there with me? And as she shoved it in my hands, I took it and I shoved it back and I said, I'm not a pimp. My word stands. What keeps you is not how much money you got in your pocket. You know how we describe great men of God? Ties and jacket. Big, wonderful auditoriums. And yet men and women that have not learned the secret a bruise in their knees like George Whitfield that says oh God give me England else I die oh, yeah. the effectual fervent prayer of one man when I read that I said where I'm on a journey. You don't have to like me. No. Your greatness is not determined by how much invitation you get. Am I, am I saying something right now? No. It's good to get invitation, but that's not your greatness. That's not where it lies. It's learning how to pour out your soul before the Lord. You got the weapon of prayer. Touch somebody and say, use it. But that's just one side of the truth. All truths are parallel. There's a front side of truth and there's a back side of truth. Jesus stepped a little further and he says, if two shall agree. Y'all aren't hearing me tonight. He says, if two shall agree as touching anything on this earth. The problem with the body of Christ, we are too demon conscious. First thing in the Sunday morning is to drive out devils. No, get the presence of God. I'm, I'm learning that. Satan don't love the presence of God. Y'all there with me? He don't love when you come Sunday morning and all you do with broken heart, you kneel before the Lord together and say, oh God, I worship you. Demons will flee. But I love what this scholar said about if two shall agree, it's touching anything. I've calmed them a little bit, you know, because I told you I'm more a teacher than a preacher. If two shall agree, as touching anything. Key emphasis, key word, is not just agree, but touching. It tells us profoundly and contextually that praying as a group of people, as a church, it's not so much about gathering in a circle and holding hands. If that was true, we would have seen a lot of answers already. But then I've been thinking, why is it on Sunday morning that the church is filled? But on a prayer meeting time, it's empty. Uh, I've been thinking... I think I know why. Because people ain't getting their prayer answered. A church that gets the prayer answered will be filled. You know why Sunday morning is filled? Because you get entertainment. Y'all not here with me now. Y'all not here with me again. No, no, you know, you get entertainment, yeah? You get entertainment. Entertainment don't bring answers. 
You jump, you prance, you fall on the ground, and when you go back home, you still got the doubt and fear. You still got to go back to the work. Are you all there with me? Are you all there with me? And so we have produced a generation of Christians that are filled to the capacity with entertainment because prayer is out of the house of God. Uh, being in prayer meeting, I remember growing up. As my, I'm growing up, and sometimes the pastor stays behind the 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 audience. Then you look up, you look up, but nobody could see him. But when you look closely, he's asleep. <laughs> Y'all not here with me tonight. This is not a joke. The pastors sleep more than members. Are y'all here with me? Deacons sleep more than members. Administrators feel more than members. And these are the ones that's supposed to be passing the, the, the baton. That's supposed to lead in. A man can be no way more powerful than his prayer life. I'm learning that every day of my life. You cannot be more stronger than your prayer life. So let's go back. If two shall agree, let's touch him. That word touch means to come into a great intense desire to see this thing come to pass. A burning in Hence, desire. That's what is touching. Not grabbing somebody's hand and say, come, let's believe God. Anybody could do that. But he says, if two shall agree as touching anything, I want that to happen to you as much as I want it to happen to me. That's agreement. Somebody say amen above. That's agreement. Touch him, say it's agreement, say it's agreement. Say agreement, agreement. Say one more time, agreement, agreement. Say one more time, agreement, agreement. As I close tonight, I want to take you back to the text. Are you here with me? The army of Pharaoh had caught up with God's people. <clears throat> They couldn't retreat because if they did, there will be right in the hands of the enemy. They couldn't go forward because the great Red Sea was before them where they will drown and die. The enemy thought to themselves, we got it all in our favor. But little did they know that the Lord was about to break forth for his people. Y'all not here with me tonight. By this time, Moses was desperately crying out to God for his intervention. Then all of a sudden, God spoke up. He said, Moses, why are you crying out to me like this? You got a mouth and you got a rod. Use it. Oh God, I wish everybody could stand to their feet now and give somebody a high five and say, you got a mouth. Oh God, y'all not helping me preach tonight. I want you to hollow out to somebody tonight. Hollow as loud as you can and say, you got a mouth and you got a rod. Shout it, everybody. I want to speak to you tonight. Why are you crying out to God to come when he have given you a rod? Why are you crying out to God to come when he have given you the rod of using his name? I want to hollow out to you tonight. Use that name. Use that name. When the devil comes up, use that name. When you're going through a storm, use that name. When you on your job and they try to don't press you, use that name. 
I say use that name touch your neighbor and give them a high five and say use that name there is power in that name there is victory in that name there is joy in that name there is freedom in that name come on come on come on use it use it use it use it when sickness come against your body use it did i talk to somebody tonight i said use it y'all not here with me tonight i wish i could get some crazy people here tonight crazy crazy bunch of people tonight you got power power i've given you power over scorpion to tread on them <laughs> use it that's what i came here to tell you tonight after i've done it all and said it all use it some of you have placed it in your closet take it out you have placed it my god under your bed take it out the greatest weapon is the authority at the name of jesus wherefore god has exalted him and has given him a name that at the name of jesus I said, at the name of Jesus. I said, at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Come on, watch those knees. Watch those knees. That knee might represent your enemy. That knee might represent the sickness. Watch that knee and say, knee, you got to bow. I don't care how long that sickness have been in your body, it got to bow. I don't care how long you've been going through in your family, it have to bow. Use that name. Somebody shout, shout, shout. Hallelujah. Somebody shout. Glory to God. Use that name. Use that name. Use that name. Glory. Use that name. Oh, hallelujah. The name that is above all name. The name that is mighty and powerful. The name that is adorable. The name that demons shiver. The name, hallelujah. That every knee shall bow. The name, hallelujah. Use that name. Use that name. Glory to God. Use that name. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That name have power. Hallelujah! Unshakable power. Unmovable power. Ah, I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Power the anointing of God. Power that cannot be shaken. Power that the devil is afraid of. Power of the Yes! Power! To God be the glory! To God be the glory! Hallelujah! Use that name. I say use that name. <laughs> the devil's afraid of that name. I say use that name. Oh Lord! The enemy is afraid of that name. Yes, hallelujah. When the devil hear that name, he trembles. When the devil hear that name, he's afraid. Are you having somebody? Glory to God. 
God we don't understand but the name of Jesus Christ is a strong tower the righteous run in and they are saved somebody I said the name of Jesus is a strong tower the righteous run in and they are saved Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Use that name. Use that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I feel good. I say I feel good. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word tonight. Thank God for the man of God tonight. Amen. I told you. I said I told you. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow night we're going to hear him again. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell somebody they're missing something. Come out tomorrow night and hear. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God is alive and well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give God thanks and praise for Pastor Warren tonight. And for sharing with us, amen, from the word of God. What you have, use it. Amen. And we have the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All that we possess... Amen. By Almighty God has given us the authority to use. And so we must use it because he has given us, amen, what it takes to use it. The time we are afraid to use it because we don't know how the enemy will react. But when we know the God in whom we serve, we are not afraid of the terror by night. Not the arrow, amen, that, amen, that is a noonday. Not the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Huh? That the destruction that waits at the noonday. The Bible said a thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand on the right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Because only with an eye shall thou behold. And see the reward of the wicked. Are you hear me somebody? Come on give the Lord some praise. Because God is of the praise. The child of God has the power. Amen. To declare. And to release the power. And the anointing that is within them come on give the Lord the praise tonight give the Lord the praise thank you Jesus we'll be back tomorrow night God's will and Wednesday night and Thursday night and Friday night and Sunday afternoon praise God amen praise God don't forget tomorrow night Amen. We'll be hearing from Pastor Warm again. And then on Wednesday, we'll be hearing from Dr. Lee. Praise God. And on Thursday, we'll be hearing from Pastor Murray, Dr. Lee, and Pastor Warm as they sit on the panel. Amen? Amen. We will be discussing the importance of the Holy Spirit in the church. Amen. Amen. And so you can walk with questions. Amen. Because answers will be given. Amen. What do you think? What want to know about the Holy Spirit? How important the Holy Spirit is to the church and to you as an individual. Amen. Praise God. And there will be answers. Hallelujah. Invite somebody. Tell them you're missing something. You need to be here. Tell somebody next to you, don't miss tomorrow night. Amen. Tell somebody next to you, don't miss tomorrow. If you plan to miss tomorrow night, don't miss tomorrow night. We don't know what God has for us. Amen. God has something great. Amen. In store for us. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. Amen. We are happy to have in our midst, amen, Pastor Aggie, always supporting us. We give God praise and thanks, amen, for her. Glory to God. We thank God for Dr. Lee and his, amen, uh, brethren who came along with him. Praise God. We thank God for them. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for Pastor Douglas with us on the bass. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our brother on the uh, rhythm, what you call it? Rhythm. Amen. Praise God. To God be the glory. Amen. God is good. Amen. I say God is good. I say God is good. Praise God. And so we give God praise and thanks for everything. We thank God for Pastor Woman and his wife. Amen. Amen. And his daughter and grandson. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Rachel. Amen. She quiet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for all those who are visiting with us. God bless you. It was an honor to have you here tonight. Truly, amen. Your presence would have mean a lot. Amen? amen. Praise God. Continue to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. amen. Don't forget on Friday night, we'll be at the Snow Corner Junction. Amen. Well, we'll be having an open air crusade at the Snow Corner Junction. And so we're expecting God to pull some souls in. Amen. amen. Save some lost sinners. Bring them to repentance. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And on Saturday we'll be back here having some fellowship swallowship. Amen. Amen. And, then on, <laughs> and then on Sunday we'll be back again to give God praise, glory, and honor. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let me see those of you who are blessed tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Let us stand to our feet as we dismiss. Thank you, everyone. God bless each and every one tonight. Hallelujah. Let's lift our right hand, everybody. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest remain in the Bible with us all, both now and forevermore. And everybody say, Amen. Greet your brother in Jesus' name. Thank you. Everything I double, double. Everything I double, double, promotion double, double, your business double, double.